Thanks for the support as a channel member, Owen Herterich. Well, we've just about got the most backdoor of backdoor Kev possibilities of sneaking into the Europa Conference League. But to be honest, I don't really want to. I think, I think we're better off with a nice, comfortable mid-table finish, a nice rebuild over the summer, and a push for Europe next year. Which means we're almost certainly about to qualify for Europe. Hello, I'm going to Club 3, Part 5 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two games of the season in the Bundesliga, away against Stuttgart and at home against Augsburg. Um, since you were last with me, this is what we have been doing. Um, bot bottling it, basically. We were in a nice little opportunity to uh, to qualify for Europe. When we beat Bayern Munich 3-0, a comfortable 3-0 win over Bayern Munich, I was sat there thinking... We're going to need to come back early because we're going to forget Conference League. We're going to be in the Europa League. Easy peasy. We then didn't win for four games. And by the time we beat Stuttgart again, um, sorry, Hamburg, not Stuttgart. By the time we beat Hamburg, we were effectively no longer in a race for Europe. Um, mathematically, we could still theoretically do it. We're six points behind Leipzig, but there's a nine goal goal difference swing needed as well. So we need to win both of ours. Well, Leipzig, Köln, and Hertha Berlin lose all of theirs, and we win big, and they win big in each of those games, and it just seems pretty unlikely. And even after all that, depending on what happens in the cup, seventh place might not be enough for Europe anyway, because Leipzig are probably sat there wondering if they're going to be qualifying for Europe as well. So, yeah, Europe not important. What is important is that we didn't get relegated. We've massively overachieved against what the board wanted for us this season. We're not really getting much in the way of a transfer budget this summer, theoretically. I mean, I guess they could give us more, but with a balance like that and debt like that, I think it's probably unlikely. So I think we just need to secure our mid-table finish. We then, finishing as high as possible, get our, get our Bundesliga prize money in. And then we can just start shipping some of these older players out, some of the players we don't necessarily use. We've not got a big squad to sell a lot of players from, um, but if we can bring in one or two more players this summer, that would be awesome. Continue to develop the youngsters, and I think we'll be fine. Um, the next gen, I don't know if I can still show you it because it was a little while ago. Next gen. Um, can we still show you the top 50? I don't think I can. You can see that Palasconis won the next gen at Peterborough. Um, he's got a £12 million relegation release clause. It would be nice to think we'd be in a position to buy somebody like that because obviously Peterborough have been relegated. And they did manage to win a few more games in the end. Uh, Morgan Schneiderlin slowly but surely turning things around, but too little too late. So Posh have already been relegated. So all those players with release clauses are going to be available. But we're probably not going to have the money to cash in any release clauses. But the key thing on the next gem... Um, was that Colin Schultz was fourth on the list. I don't know if it shows that on his milestones or awards or anything. No, he was fourth. And where is he? Uh, Tamas Ayan was seventh. So we have got two of the top seven wonder kids in the world in our midst. Weirdly, Leonardo, nowhere to be seen, even though he genuinely is a wonder kid. I wonder if maybe he's too old to be on the Wonder Kid list, perhaps at 20, even though he is still defined as a Wonder Kid um, in game. I think he's actually too old to be on the Wonder Kid next gen list. I think you have to be 19 or under for that. But yeah, very bright future. A lot of very good young players coming through. So we don't necessarily need to do an absolute bundle of transfers. And we can just rely on our excellent youth setup. There's more very good young players ready to come through, as you can see. So. We don't need to push too hard to do transfers. But you know me, I'm going to want to do a few. So let's finish the season off. This is the team for Stuttgart. We've got Hoy and Hall in goal. About four of Beerlein, Bono, Canastrelli and Smoltz. Garner at the base of the midfield. Kadir and Leonardo ahead of him. And then Sieb and Tamasayan with Hollaback up front. Look at these beautiful lines, by the way. This team's not been together that long. But we've already got all these beautiful partnerships. Every potential partnership we can have has got a little line. I love it. Right, let's go and put that to good use. Win a football match, then win another football match. Finish as high at the league as we possibly can. 
And then, fingers crossed, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get our transfer budget in today's episode, but it would be quite nice knowing what kind of money we're going to have to go and say, basically knowing if we're going to have a transfer budget at all. That's not ideal. That's not an ideal start at all. Um, I have had a couple of people as well asking if I've put a skin on the game um, because we're in the Bundesliga and it looks different. I haven't. I've never used a skin on Football Manager. I can't. Don't really understand why I ever would. I've never really seen the appeal of using skins. The base game looks lovely as it is, but this is the uh, it's part of the Bundesliga license that the game has, which is why it looks a little bit different in game with some of the custom Bundesliga graphics and the fact you get the photograph of the player on the goal scorer and that kind of stuff. That's not a skin. That's just Bundesliga. If you haven't managed in the Bundesliga yet on FM22, you're missing out. It's all pretty and shiny and lovely because it's it's a fully licensed. Um, top level league. I think the only one where they have a full license for every team um, and all the players within the teams and it is fully licensed all the way through um, is the Bundesliga. So it is it is quite cool seeing what Football Manager might look like in a world where they had all the licenses. Not that that would ever happen, I imagine. Um, but we are 1-0 down here. So, I mean, it's, it's difficult to worry about that too much when we're... We're kind of entering, or have already really entered the cruise control stage of the season. I think that win over Bayern, um, in addition to showing us what we were capable of, also pretty much confirmed we definitely weren't going to be relegated or even in that relegation playoff. So I think from that point on, I think we have been a little bit guilty of taking our foot off the pre off the pedal a little bit and almost going into cruise control, um, just thinking more in terms of what I want to be doing next season rather than worrying so much about this year. I think that back four and goalkeeper and defensive midfielder, I think that is set. If we can bring in, if we can bring in some others to compete for places there, then super duper. If we could bring in a replacement for Canastrelli, if we've got loads of money, then super duper. But really I'd be happy with that back six um, for the, the whole of next season. We don't have much in the way of backup players, but Oh, that's lovely from Kadira. Um, I'd be happy with that back six going into next season. Once you get into central midfield, Kadira is one of the ones who's going to be moving on this summer. We've already sold um, the goalkeeper we had when we first arrived. He's gone off to play in the MLS, so that's a big salary off the wage budget. And um, Kadira is going to be another one who moves on. It's a lovely pass from Leonardo there. And Kadira doing very well to round the goalkeeper. But at 34 years old, it doesn't matter how well he's playing now. I'm not confident of getting another full season out of him. So as he's one of the higher paid players at the club, being one of the senior players, definitely someone would be looking to move on and slot another player um, into that position. One of the young midfielders from Peterborough, maybe on a relegation release clause, if we get any kind of money. Otherwise, we'll, we might just have a little look in our own youth setup. We've got those two young attacking midfielders in Schultz and the other guy whose name begins with V that I can't remember. Uh, both of them are natural central attacking midfielders. Now, that's not a position we're using in this system at the moment. Oh, Leonardo is very good. I think that's offside, but he's just very good. Um, so we probably need to be looking to change positions for both of them. I think Schultz probably long-term is going to be playing centre-forward for us. The goal has been allowed. Um, Tother guy probably out wide on the right, but maybe one of them could play central midfield alongside Leonardo if we're not going to have the money to go out and buy someone, but we do need that. We do need that Kadira replacement. And then... Cyan on the right is nailed on for life. Um, Sieb is 26, I think. So certainly not desperate to sell. Um, but if we get the £55 million offer for him that has been rumoured, I think we could do a lot with £55 million. And I don't think he's that important to us that he's not worth selling for £55 million. He's a He's a good player, but he's not obviously better than everyone else at the club, I don't think. Um, Vol Volzo, that's the guy on the right. Um, that's the guy who also needs a position as a natural attacking midfielder. Um, so Sieb, I'm not against selling if we get a big offer for him. I needed to make two subs there. And then Hollaback, I'm not sure if Hollaback is the future for us up front. Um, we're going to stick him out wide now and stick Schultz up front, actually bring the youngster on again, uh, playing in there. Two round deuters, lovely. Uh, but Hollaback, he is only 22, so I'm, I am willing to give him time because he has started to knock the goals in this year. And of course, I love the fact that it makes you all think of the Gwen Stefani song. Uh, but I wouldn't be against bringing in a, a, a proper striker. Although bringing in a proper striker does mean that the system that we're using at the moment wouldn't be as effective. Because the reason it's working so well is because the central striker drops deep and lets the two wide players run beyond him. So his job isn't really there to score loads of goals. So... 
maybe Hollaback is doing the job that he needs to do exactly as he needs to do it. Or maybe Schultz, the best young player in the world, should get a run if we don't if we decide to go against Hollaback rather than rather than going with somebody new coming in. I mean, I'll let you you number nerds, those of you who love the attributes, have a little look at Colin Schultz. Um, if I'm not using an attacking midfielder, are you playing him up front? I mean, I'm I'm comfortable playing him up front. He's not the one thing he's missing is the strength to hold the ball up nicely, but He's got that. I mean, he's 17 years old. Physical attributes come with age, don't they? So I wouldn't be too alarmed just yet. A 17 year old's a little bit lacking in strength. Just get him in the weight room, get him eating entire chickens three times a day, and he'll be a big, strong boy in no time. Right, we're going to push beer line further forward and bring Franca on at the back. Frank is another one we're going to look to move on. He's an old man. I've got a good feel for this squad now, I think, and know what we need to do. It just, we're at the moment, we're at a crossroads. Are we going to have to do it using our own youth intakes and do it a little slower? Or are we going to get some money to spend or sell Seeb and be able to do it a little bit quicker? And it kind of, that kind of, did, oh, look at how good we play at times. Just some of the football this team is capable of is, it's very nice. I don't, I just don't understand how the previous manager was doing everything so wrong, not using these young players and playing in a system that just wasn't working. I mean, I know we have brought in five key players who've just come straight into the team and effectively played every game. We've we've kind of brought in an entirely new half a team. But even the ones that were already here, they're playing much better now than they've ever played before because we're playing them in their right positions. They're playing them in their natural roles and they're doing brilliantly. I'm just, I'm just very good at football manager. Sometimes, sometimes I, f I believe the comments section too much and think I might not be very good at it. And then I sit back and watch myself playing and think, oh, Kev, you're very talented. And I'm having one of those moments today. Right, Kadira in midfield, who I say at 34, we might need to move on. But his energy levels, he very rarely has to be substituted. He just, I don't know, maybe he's got an engine that will keep him going a little bit longer um, because he is still very involved in this game in the 91st minute. And Leonardo's just getting better and better. I mean, he's another one, similar to Sieb, who, unless we go and qualify for the Champions League next year, I think Leonardo is someone who, we're having a lot of fun with him now, but I don't think we can build around him long term because he's almost certainly going to be sold on for mega money at some point because he, he should be playing for a better club than us already. He is already the best player at this club by a gazillion miles. He doesn't yet speak the language and he's only played... 20 games in his career in Europe. So give him another year. He should be playing for Bayern Munich or Barcelona or Manchester United or somebody like that. And he probably will be. I need to make sure we've not got a release clause on him, actually. Otherwise, that could be very alarming. But look how he's linking over. He's 20 years old and he's just absolutely running this match. He's bursting through again here and very much suits this Mazzala role that he's playing in. Um, and we have picked up a victory. I, I wasn't paying any attention to what the other clubs around us were doing. So I don't know if Europe is still a possibility. We'll have a look at that now. We're also going to check Leonardo's release clause now. Um, no, Europe's not a possibility. Um, Leipzig won. They won away against Hanover. So we definitely cannot get into Europe. So I wonder if that means we'll get our budgets now. No. That's a shame. But there's Leonardo. Has he got a release clause? Yikes. Yikes, yikes. That is a big, big yikes. Because that's a release clause that anyone should be cashing in. We need to take that release clause out. Ah, he won't let me take it out. His agent's a turd. I mean, even that doesn't increase it very far. 22 million. Oh, no. I'm not offering him that deal yet. We'll sit down with him in the summer. We need him to ask for a contract so I can then ask him to sack his agent. And then we can hopefully sort out something that doesn't have a release clause in. But, I mean, if I'm any club in any top flight in Europe, I'm spending £17.5 million on him this summer because he's just been brilliant. <sighs> right, let's go play our final game of the season and I'll try not to worry too much that we're going to lose our star man. So, no changes for the final game of the season. I've just noticed, actually, Kadira is now 35. Definitely need to be moving him on. We've just had a really long break between the, um, between the penultimate game and this match. 
absolutely ridiculous. Why you wouldn't just end the season a little bit earlier is madness. And we've all just had a two-week holiday and now we're back to play one more football match that doesn't matter at all. Silly old German football. And um, We also had Schultz win the un- Best Under-17 Player Award or something along those lines, despite not really playing a lot of football. But best, I, I guess there's not a lot of under-17 players knocking around in the Bundesliga. Uh, Sieb is in here right at the start of the game and his effort um, straight at the goalkeeper and balloons over the crossbar for a corner, which Garner is going to take, who settled in very nicely to German football, playing in that deep lion playmaker role where he just keeps everything ticking over in midfield and allows Leonardo and Kadira to do all the running ahead of him while he just pings passes around. And we've lost Sieb to a proper injury. I mean, if he's unavailable all summer with a proper injury, then that does have an impact on whether or not we're able to sell him. We were talking before about having two potential plans for the summer. Um, I might have just had my hand forced because if I can't sell my pretty much only significantly saleable asset that I'd want to let go of anyway. I mean, someone like Cyan, Leonardo, probably even Schultz, although he probably needs a season of football under his belt. But Cyan, for sure, I think we could probably get 35, 40 million pounds for. I wouldn't want to, even though we've got another player who can play on the right side in Volzo um, coming through. Um, but if we're not going to have Sieb, who would be the obvious one to sell if I want to do a big rebuild, um, that does kind of force my hand into focusing on the youngsters, which I, I guess that's what we all want to do anyway. Being able to, it's not often you get the opportunity to work with a youth set up like this one. And everyone knows it's super duper fun bringing your own young players through. So I think that's probably what we're being pushed towards. I mean, it might not be a bad injury. Although the fact that he's had to go off after 10 minutes with a proper red injury um, suggests it'll probably be something like a broken leg or a, a busted metatarsal situation that's going to keep him out for months and mean that, I mean, what are we now? Early May. If he's out for three or four months, that's him out all summer. No pre-seasons. He'll be rubbish next year. He'll become fit again just as the transfer window is coming to an end. So we won't be able to sell him and he won't be any good. We've we've ruined him. Write him off. Bring Gonzalez in, even though he's not been any good either. And he's still available on a free transfer. I think that says a lot about Felix Gonzalez. Normally, uh, a good player would be snapped up. But I think the fact that his wage demands are insane for his actual quality. I mean... He's got a lot of positive about him, but he's not been brilliant for us. So to be fair, he's not started a game. It's 15 substitute appearances. But he wants like 60 or 70,000 pounds a week, which I think is why nobody's bringing him in. We'll definitely monitor him over the summer because presumably no one's going to pay him that kind of money. So if it gets to the point where Real Madrid are releasing him and then similar sort of time frame, if we're getting into August and no one's picked him up yet, I'd like to think we'll see his wage demands start to come down. And if we can pick him up for a more reasonable 20, 25,000 pounds a week, which is what he's worth because he's a good young player with potential who's proven nothing yet. He never got into the Real Madrid first team at all. This is his first real taste of top division, first team football anywhere in the world. And he's not been able to get into the team, get into a team who were in the relegation zone when he arrived. So I think he probably needs to Re- readjust his expectations, become a little bit more realistic about what he should actually be expecting to earn. Although the fact that Real Madrid are paying him £51,000 a week now obviously is going to skew things because his thought process will be along the lines of, well, why would I leave unless I'm getting a pay rise? So we kind of need them to push him out the door. Right, we've got Schultz and Volzo both on the, both on the pitch now. These are, these are the two next wave of youngsters that we're going to be looking to bring through. Um, although it looks like we're just going to very tamely lose this final game of the season. I mean, to be fair, Augsburg are up in third place. I'm not sure if they've already qualified for the Champions League or if they need a point or anything here to get them into the Champions League. But they are a better team than us. And but that is a beautiful pass from Schultz. That's a 17-year-old has just played that pass. A 17-year-old playing against a team who are going to be in the Champions League next year. He is a talent. And Gonzalez is in. And after criticising him since he pretty pretty much since he came on the pitch, he grabs the equaliser for us on the 85th minute. This is the first time he's played more than like 20 or 30 minutes of football in a match. And um, he's grabbed a goal. So, like I say, if we can get him for cheap then I think he's a decent squad option to have, especially if Sieb's going to be injured 
or potentially leaving because I think he'd fill that left-hand side spot perfectly adequately um, and has that potential to go on and be a superstar as well if he gets th that game time and is allowed to develop. We should probably drop back a more sensible mentality now that we've uh, now that we've got the goal, although it won't go through until after this highlight, so the damage might already be done because I wasn't quick enough off the draw. He's got to be offside there, surely. Um, uh, Hoyenhal's made the save, I think. It might have come back off the post. But either way, um, it's now given us time to adjust back to our balanced mentality and get a few more players behind the ball again and hopefully hold on to what is another very good point. Hoy and Hal there making the save again. What a difference having a really good goalkeeper makes as well. He has been a major difference maker since he's come in. I've sung the praises of Leonardo a lot, but Hoy and Hal has been a massive different ma difference maker. And I love the fact that from where we were when I arrived... That we've just done a I'm disappointed in that team talk after drawing against a team that have ultimately, ultimately finished the season in third place. That's how much we've moved on. There you go. Seeb's only out for three weeks. Brilliant stuff. Um, Schultz is getting a pay rise. Um, that's just to talking about European qualification. So seventh place would have got us into Europe, but we didn't get anywhere near it in the end. I'm just going to hit one more continue to see if we get budgets because I know you'd love to see budgets. So we do get our £45 million of prize money for finishing 10th. So the bottom half of the table, and you get more than you get for winning the Premier League, Germany is an insane country. Um, a few more scout reports coming in. Are we going to get these budgets, or are we going to have to wait until the transfer window tomorrow? As soon as that end of season review comes up, I'm not going to hit continue anymore, because that'll be where tomorrow's episode starts. So... Go on, give us the budgets before then. You know you want to give us the budgets. We're all sat here on the edge of our seat. No, no budgets for you today. I'm going to find out in about a minute and a half. But for you, you've got to wait 23 and a half hours. And I will see you again tomorrow. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.